creating a load study report um, using an Energy Analyze Plus software. So what we'd want to do here is, is um, for a load study, what we're looking for is the highest average current measured. Um, and there's different ways that we can incorporate data into the report, but we're going to walk through the steps here on creating a report. Um, what we want to do first is, is um, if we take a look at the energy study tab, this is where the data is going to rely or be present that we have for actually our amperage and voltage and other parameters, but we want amperage in this case. So we're going to go ahead and select volts, amps, hertz, THD. And so by default, if we look over here all the way off to the right, under our scaling options, we see that we have voltage, current, frequency, unbalance. There's multiple options we can pick from here. So in this case, um, to make things look a little cleaner, um, we're going to go ahead and uncheck voltage because we're more interested in load. We'll also see that there's this max and min option. So I'm going to check a phase current. And to make sure we're viewing the entire, um, you know, the entirety of the recording, we can move the mouse all the way off here into the scaling bar. And when it turns to a hand, you can right click over here and then select auto scale X, Y to fit. And we're already viewing it. So for example, if we'd been zoomed in like this and we went and did this, it would pull us back out to the main screen view. And then we can also, um, I'm going to hide the cursors in this case, just to make it look a little cleaner. So min and max can be added, but these can kind of skew the numbers because these are the min and max half cycle measurements during the period. We really want to look at averages. So we want to go ahead and hide those. So we just make sure we'll start off with the A phase only here. So once you have the A phase visible, what we want to do next is, is that you can either move till the symbol turns into a hand on top of the waveform somewhere, but it's kind of easier to move all the way down to the little box in the corner, the little color box for the phase. So if I move all the way down here and I right click on that box, there's a find min max option. And if you don't have it here, it could be that you're using an older version of Energy Analyze Plus software. Um, if we look up here at the top, I'm running version 3.6, which is the current released version. So then you should have find min max. So if I click this, what it's going to do is it's going to tick and put in some little markers here, noting where the min and maximum for the average is. So this is your highest average, the maximum. So what we can do here is we can right click on this and we can go to move. So then I can kind of drag this into a more visible position. So that way it's kind of not tucked off here in the corner of the screen. And then for down here, I'm going to go ahead and delete the minimum because we really don't need to see that information here. We can also add some notes in here. So if we want to add in some notes that show up in the report, we can go up here in the corner, up in the right corner and click add notes. So it'll be right up here next to copy and zoom in. So if I click add notes, I can put a little box somewhere on here and add notes. So in these, this little marker here will stay as a number on here, but the notes will appear separately in the report. So I could type in um, average A, let's see, uh, maximum load for the A phase was, it looks like 113.1 amps. So you can type in whatever you want here. So we'll just type that in here. Click OK. And we'll see that there's a little note that appears here. And then what we're going to do next is, is that we want to add this to the report. So how we do that is, is that I recommend you minimize or hide the graph options. So in the little orange bar here, the yellow bar, click minus. And then you get a little bit larger view. And then click add bookmark here in the corner. So it'll be in the upper right. You'll see it processing and storing the bookmark. And when it's finished, the next thing we want to do is, is go ahead and check B phase. So we can't have all three phases all on here simultaneously if you just want one trend line, you know, one view. But we're going to go ahead and we'll clean this up a little bit and we'll give B its own option here. And again, you'll see the little cursor here, which is just where we put in the, 
the you know a phase notation earlier. So in this case, the next step we want to do is, is we want to go ahead and move our cursor and right click the little red box down here at the bottom and go to find min max again. So um, could be that these are phases are not exactly in the same spot, but it might be typical that they are in a similar location. So in this case, I'm going to right click on the minimum and delete it and right click on the maximum and click move. And then I'm just going to hold down my left mouse button and drag it to a different position here. OK, and then what we want to do is, is we'll want to click Add Notes again. And I'm going to put in another note here. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to go ahead and type in, um, let's see, max, some, maximum average B phase current was 102.2 amps. Put that in there, we'll just click OK. So once again, we're going to hide graph options and we're going to go click Add Bookmark again. And it goes ahead and we'll create the bookmark for it. So let's bring the graph options back and we're going to go ahead and uncheck B phase. And we're going to check C phase this time. And we're going to go ahead and move down to the blue box at the bottom. We'll right click and click Find Min Max. And here we see that the maximum is positioned slightly differently. So we'll go ahead, right click, delete the minimum. And then we could leave this here where it's at, but I'm going to go ahead and click move and we'll move this uh, a little over here. And then we're going to go ahead over off to the upper right and click add notes again. Put in a marker here and we'll go um, maximum average C phase. Current is 122.4 amps. Put that in there and click OK. So now that we have this set up, we'll minimize graph options again. And then we're going to click Add Bookmark. And we're going to go ahead and add it into the report window. We're going to go ahead and um, bring the graph options visible again. OK, so we finished adding in the trend lines showing what our highest average current is for the load study. Now, we can add in table data. If we click the plus and minus, you can switch between a table and a graph view. So if we switch over to the table view here by hitting the plus symbol in the upper left, the what we see here is we do have, um, and we can hide these since we're focused mostly on amperage. So in this case, what we see here is, is that we see max, average, and min. Well, the maximum here is we can see is going to be much higher because we're just looking at the half cycle maximum, which isn't what we want. So if for some reason you still want to incorporate the highest, lowest, and average measurements into the report, we could click Add Bookmark over here to add this in if we wanted to. But it can be a little deceptive again because this is not the highest average. So what we're going to do is, I'm not going to go ahead and do that in this example here. But what we want to do is, is um, go up to Settings at the top and go to Report Output Format. And then you'll see that you have um, a PDF option, a rich text, and open preview option. So we'll leave it as open preview. And then we also can pick a logo. So right now we have the default Fluke logo, but we can pick one. And if you use a custom logo, it should be about 90 by 90 pixels if you're using a custom logo. So just to be aware of the sizing there. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and we'll leave the uh, open preview option visible. And then what we're going to do is, is we'll double check Project Manager really quick. And this allows us, and we've already filled in some information here, but we can type in other notes and fill in other information. We can also, in the upper right-hand corner, add images. If you want to put a pictures, some pictures in here, like maybe a thermal image or something. And then we could click Add Data. And Add Data allows us to add in a whole other recording session that we can overlap into the report from maybe a previous recording time period or a different recording location even. And we could do multiple of these if we wanted to. And then also export here would be as if we want to export data to like an Excel spreadsheet, which some customers may want raw data numbers, which you would use the export function here to accomplish that. 
But right here, we're just going to go ahead and work with our visual report as we have it. So we're going to go ahead and click Report tab. And we'll see that over under Project Manager, we have a summary and a description of what the setup looked like. And you can include these. So in this case, we'll go ahead and drag over the summary we typed in, which we can expand it to see what it is. And then we can even, you know, minimize that. And then we'll just go ahead and grab in this information. So we'll see here that we have summary information here. And we can rename this if we want to. Instead of ES098, we could rename this call like settings, maybe, so we know what it was. Because as we get more elements in here, sometimes these things won't be quite so obvious. And then in here, we'll add in just by dragging and dropping the other three phases. So I can expand it out here, and we'll see here we have you know, um, the C phase. And again, you don't need to put notes in here, so it's up to, totally up to you there. They'll show up in the report once we generate it. We'll see that in a moment. So again, um, if for some reason you want to reorder, like maybe you want summary to be down here, you can grab and drag and release here. And what'll happen is, is that'll allow us to move the elements to a different location. Um, in this case, let's see, I guess we have settings here. We don't want to put settings up here at the top so we can reverse them around here like this if we wanted to, or we can move it back down. So you can drag these in any order you want. And again, if you want to rename them, expand it and just click rename. Or if you want to remove it, you can remove it. Restore opens this trend plot up back into the main view like we we're in the energy tab again. So that's what restore will do for you. So once we've created the report here, export report is active in the toolbar here above report now. And I'm going to go ahead and click this. Uh, OK, so what happened here was is it went ahead and opened up the preview screen so we can see what this looks like. So we have the information we put in here. We have the setup information. Again, the other setup information here. And then we have our graphs. And then we have our description fields down in here. So some of the notes that we typed in. And so this would really be. Um, and again, you can add in any type of data, or you can zoom in and zoom out if you want to. You don't need to even show the entire trend line. It's completely up to you, or put in notes. But this would be giving you some options here and how we could set up the report. So what I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to go ahead, and from this line in preview, we can still create an actual PDF file. So I'm going to export to PDF here. I'm just going to go ahead and use the default settings here and click OK. And then it's going to ask me what I want to call this report. So we're going to call this, um, let's see, maybe we'll call this St. Clair. And then we'll put in, well, we'll just call it St. Clair at this point. And then I'll go ahead and I'll put this in my documents folder here. So then I'll just go ahead and click Save. And the report's been generated. So that really sums up. I'm going to close the preview screen here. We'll go back. So once we've done this here, this really is the you know, primary data that you'd be looking for, is really these graphs showing the highest average current for the load study. And if we wanted to go back again and look at anything, like I said earlier, you could do a restore. So if we do a restore here, uh, not restore there, let's open up the graph. So we clicked restore here. What will happen is, is it's just going to put us back into the main screen view that we had before. So you can continue editing or delete things if you wanted to from here. So it allows us to go back and make those changes. So that really concludes the primary, um, primary video for creating a load study. And I'll end it here.